Will the BYU Cougars say red hot against Oklahoma State? And is Kansas State on upset alert? We're getting the Big 12 squad together and talking all things Big 12 football. You're talking ball with the Big 12 squad. From Oklahoma State to Utah, from Kansas State to BYU, from Houston to Texas Tech, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big 12 weekend. Buckle up, it's the Big 12 squad and we have a seat for you. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up, you're part of the Big 12 squad. Welcome into the Locked On Big 12 Squad Show. I'm Jay Catch. Yes, I am filling in as the host of this week's edition. Uh, sources conflict on where Drake Toll is right now. Uh, there are some people who believe he may be, you know, suspended and or fired for last week's charade, bringing on St. Saint, uh, <laughs> Bill Snyder. But hey. Everybody, how's everybody doing out? <laughs> he, he, it's like the it's like the one wrestler uh, that was from Parts Unknown. I think that's yeah. where Drake is right now. Yeah, <laughs> he's just part, Parts Unknown, man. We'll keep Hard it mysterious. Say Drake Cole's away for, <laughs> away from the team for personal reasons. <laughs> well, he's in he's in yeah. street clothes somewhere. Yes, yeah. that's right. I think he's at a tattoo I, parlor. I don't know. I think he'll bury the lead here. He might. He might have finally got so sunburned he had to take a break. Where's your pink? Where's your tan here? What you got going on, Jake? Uh, I'm I, I'm in Utah where it's about to get real snowy. Let's just put it that way. So, uh, Cody Stovall, we're going to talk about Oklahoma State here in a minute. So get ready for that snow when you guys come out this way, just FYI. But we got Chris <laughs> Lev from Locked On Texas Tech next to me. Cody Stovall from Locked On Oklahoma State next to him. We got the venerable JT Wistersow from Locked On Utes uh, down on the far right if you're watching this on YouTube. Richie Bradshaw from Locked On Sun. Devils, Mountaineer Paul with Locked On West Virginia, and of course, Parker Ainsworth. And why are you here, Parker, when you're talking about the Houston Cougars in football? <laughs> hey, the eight, preseason the basketball polls came, came out. out. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah the eight people. Uh, the wait, we're not talking worry, hoops. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> we're almost there. <laughs> we I can't there. even think. I can't even think about basketball. I'm already disappointed <laughs> with football. You, you can't even bring up basketball right now. <laughs> All right. I want to start off has basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. Okay, I don't know. If I thought they, they all played us. at BYU. I thought that was the de- that was the deal there. Mm, they, they very well may be at this point. Let's just put it that way. The pro- <laughs> uh, but let's let's get started today. And I want to start off. Uh, so Cody Stovall, you and I are going to be obviously at loggerheads this week because we got the big matchup Friday night in Provo. Uh, I'll just give everybody a heads up. The forecast out here in Utah is the high for the day is in the upper 40s. By the time this game kicks off at 8 15 8 8 20 local time we're talking about maybe mm. upper 30s and potential rain slash snow so cody y'all ready for the winter no absolutely not but hey i got i have good news all right there's excitement in stillwater my gundy he hit his head with a, a cow and it didn't knock any sense into him because we still have the same coaches so well, there's that Okay, here's the thing. He claims he got headbutted by the cow because the cow watched Oklahoma State football. So, wh- wh- are, are we are we well, are, or, is there any buy in this excuse? Or the the truth is, Mike Gundy was watching film and decided that it was better to headbutt a cow than to continue to watch the product that he was uh, being forced to to, to grade. That uh, man does that would make a show at a retirement I home. I can understand don't, that. Don't besmirch uh, <laughs> yeah. Mike Gundy and his farming and coaches shows at the Listen, retirement Chris, home. Everybody knows that I, that's how you get the toughest questions is at retirement homes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> To hey, be well, fair, the heard retirement if, if was ask, also. If you ask really tough questions, you may get fired. You know that that's uh, or or threatened to be fired by <laughs> by the owner of a uh, of a. Of a I was going to say that the retirement home is where their quarterback resides. That was that's not is that, that there's no connection there. I thought that was the whole point. That's his dorm. That's, that, that's Cam Rising territory right there. Just so you know. Uh, here now. we go. Twenty sixth grade. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. What what is the deal with Cam Rising? <laughs> is he hurt or is he is he just been put out to pasture with Mike Gundy's cow. <laughs> Cam Rising is out for the season, Utah announced. I still cannot for the life of me understand why Kyle Whittingham left Cam in the game. After the third play of the game, he got rolled up on by a 290-pound defensive tackle. Cam Rising is the worst injury luck and is just gets injured more than anyone I've ever covered. And now two seasons where Utah has success. What did you say, Mountaineer Paul? Between him and Tyler Shuck, probably. 
Yeah, I lived yeah, that nightmare. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So two years in a row now where Utah success was really counting on Cam Rising's health because you're just not winning a conference unless you have your starting quarterback. So that's where, yeah, it's going to be incredibly challenging now for Utah. Cam apparently can't come back for another year. I cannot imagine a world where not only Cam, but Utah in particular wants to go through this whole, whole ordeal again. I mean, hey, I've talked about before losing Forks my up, hair. Richie. Forks <laughs> up. We love I was one of them. relationships I, here, baby. I was one of these people. I mean, it's my man Dillingham. He, he he got lost in the abyss of the uh, of the Mill Street mob there. Or is that right? Do I have Mill Avenue? Is that right? Mill Avenue. There oh you my go. God, dude, famous. that was so funny. So I'm on the field during the uh, the storming and everything, and it was intense because for once ASU had fans in the stands, and that's not something we're used to. So. Um, also, I was under the perception that it's just the students. Oh, no. <laughs> Everyone was welcome onto the field. And it was <laughs> insane. And obviously, that was one of the greatest post-game interviews ever. And he was like, I'm one of these people. And he just jumps in and starts rallying. And ESPN's like, all right, then. don't know what else to do. <laughs> Richie, oh, somebody flashed you, didn't they? So, somebody showed them to you, didn't they? <laughs> Brother, I got shoved around okay, by okay. more than a handful of people. Okay. Um, you didn't get funny enough. I, I you met got shoved one of, around uh, by handfuls. Is that, what, what are you talking about over here? Right? Come down I met now, one of my man. everydayers on the field. They yeah. called me out there like Richie Bradshaw locked on Sun Devils. I'm like, yeah, it's me. Am I in trouble? Maybe, Your maybe worlds it was are the colliding. Utah, maybe it was the Utah defense who was shoving you because they dang sure if you would have been, t you were tackled <laughs> by the Utah defense. That's for sure. Yeah, Shout out to JT. I would just like to go over the road. I love it. Well, okay. Here's the thing, uh, Richie. I real quick on the sc Cam Scadaboo front. Is he going to be stopped at any point this season? It feels like. Is he going to what? Is he going to be stopped at all this season? Because Utah sure didn't stop him. No. And I want to throw this out there because I put it on my podcast. And the more I can talk about it, the better. I have nicknamed him the People's Running Back because oh. the people love him. He can run it. He can catch it. He can throw it. He can punt it. He does everything, right and he's your mom's favorite player. Not he's the mom. best. <laughs> if it wasn't for Ashley to be fair, Gentile, my mom just yells being... Scadabo randomly. It doesn't know it's this guy's name. <laughs> if it wasn't for Ashton Genty, <laughs> he would have a legit case to be the Doak Walker Award winner, but unfortunately, this is just the wrong year to be doing what he's doing. Hey, <laughs> Mountaineer Paul, real yeah, quick. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Really quick. Just for an accurate description of how my week has gone, I literally got clipped into a song about my comments on Scadaboo and how he's giving me nightmares. And I can confirm that every time he is brought up, I get PTSD after that performance. I All right, this. I'm going to need a link to that just just to hear it for myself. I, I saw this. <laughs> I saw this on my on the old timeline, and I, and I did the double. But I'm like, wait a second, I know these people. Hey, uh, I, I, I hate to tell Rich. I'm going to get that to me. Rich. I hate to tell Richie, but uh, Scadaboo is not even the, the best running back amongst this podcast. Scott Bernard? No. I, I, know. I, I know you're probably talking about Stacey Sneed of the Houston Cougars R there, Chris. But. Richie, got, Richie got an up-close uh, look at uh, the Red Raiders' Taj Brooks whenever they uh, Scadaboo only he was held yeah, to 60 yeah, yards. Back in the conference. He was in, good. In Lubbock. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All Taj right. Brooks. So we need to get to some predictions for these can, games. Can we go through – Go ahead. I was going to say, can we go through other 2018 high-end recruits? So just talk about Cam Rising's classmates as he enters his eighth year of college. Um, you've got in there. It's crazy. Demarion Overshawn, who's uh, the number one player in the class. Terrible defense Lawrence. for the Cowboys right now. <laughs> yeah, followed by Justin Fields. Micah Parsons was in that class. Um <laughs> Patrick Sertan, uh, the second, I should say. I should say he's not that old. There's the second. Jamar Chase. <laughs> some of, some of these dudes are already roster. on their second contract in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like and Cam man. Rising is going to be taking what class? What class can he – there's not a class left. There can't be a class left. If we're not a degrees to give him. Hey, don't forget about Bowman. All right, don't don't leave uh, don't leave my my guy out. <laughs> Bowman, there. I think you're the same class. <laughs> All right. Okay, we are gonna get into. I we still need to get Mountaineer Paul. Neil Brown is apparently making waves out in West Virginia. We need to dig into that. We also get into the games this coming weekend. We'll dig into all that as Locked On Big Twelve School Locked On Big Twelve Squad. Excuse me, rolls on momentarily.
This edition of Locked On Big 12 is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Of course, FanDuel is here for you guys no matter what you need when your sports betting needs out there. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return with our friends at FanDuel right now as they are America's number one sports book. Super simple and easy to use app. The best part is whenever you got the hunch in the middle of a game, check out the latest stats. You live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you're placing your bets. It's all available to you from our friends over at FanDuel. And of course, you get started right now with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet that's two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed with simply put your first five dollar bet take advantage of it today head to fanduel.com to take advantage of that offer it's all courtesy your friends over at fanduel as they are america's number one sports book Locked on Big 12 squad back together for another week here. All right, Mountaineer Paul, it is your time to shine. Neil Brown is making waves out there in Morgantown. Give us like the, just, give us like the, 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 the Reader's Digest version of what all is going down with the Mountaineers right now. Well, just to, just to – here's how we got here. We're in year six. <laughs> um, you know, I would consider us historically one of the better programs in the league from a historical perspective. So our fans have a really high expectations anyway. Uh-huh. Uh, add the fact that we came off a nine-win year, there was a lot of expectations for this year. We're in year six of a Neil Brown era where we haven't even been ranked not one time. That's coming off of a 16 out of 17 years of being ranked. In the press conference, um, when he was asked about his message to the fans because we got a night game against Kansas State back-to-back, we win that game. We're really in the driver's seat to still play in the Big 12 championship game when you look at it because we've got Cincinnati, Baylor, uh, well, Tex in there. But but we've got some easier teams down the line. And he went on, the, he went on to say that we should be happy because the weather was nice. Um, we should be happy because the crowd was cool. Um, the uniforms are cool. Um, so it's not all about winning, basically. And so it's it's caused a storm that Pat McAfee's picked up um, and then ran with. So hey, it's, it's been Did crazy. someone bring back Saint? The, the, the Saint back? Yeah, Saint, 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 Saint Bill Snyder's back because he's playing Kansas State, obviously. So you mentioned the fact that here's the thing. When, when in doubt, go to the weather. Come on, everybody. Let's 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 play up the weather card. That's always a good place to go, isn't it? So uh, you're saying think, the people matter is raining down in Morgantown, which are what you're getting at. I listen to that. Neil's. I listen to Neil's answer. I, I've actually known Neil since he was at Tech for three or four years. I text with him on occasion. I think he's guilty sometimes of being just very transparent and too honest. But he he did he did make the point. And I know West Virginia fancies themselves as still in the Big East at times, and they ran that league and all that. This is a tougher league but the, the whoever scheduled th- this put this schedule together is i mean did him no favors because they they've one of the three losses paul is that right and and that those teams are combined 18 and 0 is that Correct. right yeah i mean playing pitt and penn state in your non-conference is know. is a death sentence i mean like for for like you know rivalry games and all that stuff anyway but yeah Neil, I, I think he probably just answered too long uh and I, I heard what he said, and I, I, I think there's probably people taking it the wrong way and, and all that. But I, I just uh, I felt bad for him, and I know I know I know him differently than, right. than you guys do. But y- y'all are y'all want to win, and at some point you do have to win those games. He's he needs to well, win a game that he's not supposed to win, and he's been an underdog yeah. in all those three. He's lost he, all three of them. He's they- three and sixteen against top twenty five teams now. Yeah, I zero and eight I- on the road versus top twenty five teams. Those are yeah. inexcusable numbers. You yeah. can't have that. You're, Hard to win on the road. Your problem, Paul. Your problem, Paul, was last year. Houston beat West Virginia and still fired their coach. I don't. I don't know how he lasted this long. <laughs> I like. I, I get. I, I thought, the, like it's just same thing with Aranda at Baylor. Like I like Houston. Had and two Parker, that was the year. wildest ending to a game I have ever seen in Houston. That was on a Epic. Thursday night. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thursday yes. night. And they, it's and Dana like had that Red Bull like, in his back pocket, and he's like, oh, man, I'm not going to make Let it. it. And, then, <laughs> and, and then he popped the top, and then lo and behold, is like, I'm going to make it. Like, you know, here we go, at least for another day. All right. No, there so- was and I, I don't mean to pile on. I don't mean to, but there was a, a stretch there where every first, every fall sport, the first Big 12 win was West, it was soccer, volleyball, everyone's was West Virginia. So it was just like something in the air, right? It was just, I don't know what, what was going on. All right. So, Parker, yeah. 
Houston, they play football still somehow. Uh, and y'all are facing, you know, it's kind of the pillow fight of the week in the conference. Y'all are headed to Lawrence, Kansas. Are you guys going to pick up win number three and keep the misery for the Jayhawk fans rolling? I would like to take a moment, though, a uh, moment of silence for Aiden Hutchinson, who was in the same high school class as Cam Rising. Um, I, I will wow. say um, that Houston plays Kansas this weekend. Uh, Kansas, uh, you know, record looks bad. I've talked to Derek a little bit um, and I've looked up some stuff. And I will say, I don't know if they're as bad as their record is, but they're not good. He- Houston's coming off of a win and then a bye week. Um, I, I feel okay about it. Houston beat TCU, TCU beat Kansas, but the transitive property doesn't always transfer. Some of you all have seen Kansas up close in a person. Maybe I could get some insight there, but I don't, I can't figure out why they're bad. They're just bad. All right. Mountaineer Paul, Kansas state. You mentioned that record. That's not very good against yeah. top 25 teams. What's the chances they pull it off this weekend? It's funny. I, I really think we've got a shot. You know, I, I'm not going to go into that game thinking we don't. They're really beat up as well. Um, they lost a bunch of players in the, in the last week in the game versus Colorado. They're basically, their entire secondary uh, was hurt. I don't know how many are going to be back. John Kurtz hadn't heard uh, Kleiman's press conference as of yesterday when I interviewed him, so we didn't really have answers. But I would say this. We are much better off against a running team than a passing team i think we have a good run defense still our, our secondary is weak obviously and i think this is a game where it's going to be a little bit more lower scoring um I, I picked kansas state to win the game but certainly i think we've got a puncher's chance no doubt they're not worlds above us or anything like that mountaineer right. paul is ready to get hurt again <laughs> well okay hey, richie that brings me <laughs> Richie, that brings me to you. ASU's Woo! Cincinnati's. And here's the thing. The Bearcats went to UCF and, and won in Orlando. So how are you feeling about ASU heading on the road with Cam Scadaboo and company? First of all, that doesn't seem to be difficult to go to Orlando and beat UCF at this point in the year. <laughs> um, you, you, here's the thing. So ASU obviously plays in the desert. They're not really accustomed to cold weather games. I know it's the middle of October. I'm not expecting a blizzard in Cincinnati, but it will be a little bit cooler. I haven't checked the weather report. I I don't know. And it'll be a cross country trip. And ASU was not used to that when we had the conference alignment to be everyone really close together. So the mileage there is going to be really different. You're in a very different time zone than what you're used to. It is a noon game. If you're on the East Coast, it's 9 o'clock for the local time. That's also pretty different for ASU, who's used to playing kind of later in the day. So there's a lot of differences for what ASU is used to. This is a team, though, that is just playing well above their, their perceived talent level and the expectations that were given to them. They're playing with an edge this year. I've looked at their schedule. There's... There's still some really, really tough games on there, some games that I don't feel comfortable with at all. But this feels like one of the games that, you know, I don't mean the jinx us, but this feels like one of the more competent games that I myself feel that they can win at this point in time. Well, I feel I like I said that exact two, thing last week about the Utah and Arizona State game. <laughs> Well, Dude, hey, they're, they're just different this year. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's just everyone is bought into Kenny Dillingham and the fans are finally showing back up, which who would have imagined fan presence has an impact on the way your football team plays. So they're just, they're having fun. Out good in that game. Richie, a uh, quick check of the weather uh, out there in Cincinnati game times is around 61 degrees. So should, life should be pretty good. Yeah, that's it's, it's cool. We'll it's not something they're not used to. I mean, we went to Colorado and Utah for games in cooler weather. It's not like they're completely not used to it. If anything, I'm just curious about the time zone change. You're going two yeah. hours ahead, or is it three hours? Is, <laughs> three is Cincinnati hours. In, in the East Coast? It is. So, time zone, yeah, yeah. that'll. I don't feel sorry for anybody on the time, <laughs> time zone stuff, man. I, I, yeah, yeah, forget it. Okay, deal with it. <laughs> Suck it whatever. up. Texas Tech. Hey, hey, really quick, something I appreciate about Post Hatch, I just want to say, is that because we're in all these different time zones, is Jake is the weather guy. He keeps us up to date on what the weather's going to be in each of these conferences. That, that helps me keep it straight. Well, you know, Drake's the 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 show. Guy. He's going to get sunburned, like we said, but Jake keeps us straight on what's going on everywhere. I appreciate that, Jake. Hey, M- Morgantown is going to be 63 degrees, Paul, so I should be good out there, out there for you guys in Morgantown. That's the good news. Uh, real quick, JT. 
TCU, okay. last, time, last time they came to Salt Lake City, it was not very pretty because, remember, that was a really hyped game. And let's make let's, let's be very clear. TCU wiped the floor with the Utes. Is there yes. hope this week? Absolutely. This is a way different TCU program. I know that. I mean, I know they lost to Houston. No offense, Parker, but I feel like that says everything we need to know. This is a terrible matchup for TCU. You look at this team. They have 571 yards as a team. Makai Bernard rushing, or excuse me, at rushing. Makai Bernard by himself has 676 yards. Utah's running back. Houston does not, TCU does not run the ball very well. Utah's defense is going to have a bounce back with their rushing performance. Isaac Wilson does not going to need to do a lot in this game. This would be another level of a loss for a Kyle Winningham team. I cannot see it coming to that, even with Isaac Wilson at the helm. This TCU team is still one of the bottom five teams in the conference. And this Utah team, I do expect them against TCU and Houston, despite all the turmoil, to be 6-2 and two before their rough four-game stretch to end the season. I like this matchup for Utah against TCU because I think it's going to come down to the trenches. And I don't have to see Scadaboo this week. So I'm happy. I was just, I was just hoping that Steve and Simcox was going to be here to, to rebut against that, but you know, he decided not to show up. So, <laughs> all right, Howard. All right. Well, I, I think I take I take the six and two. Whoa, you're you're moving right past us. I mean, I understand that you know it, it, Cam Rising and the uh, the 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 replacement of him has got to go well, right? I, but it it's not like y'all were you know, smooth sailing or anything before last weekend either. Right. Like, I, 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 I don't if you, if Houston performs to the level of your Wi-Fi connection tonight, they're in a ton of trouble. Parker. <laughs> Dude, Parker's reporting on a potato or something. I swear. <laughs> Wi-Fi smack. Oh man. Oh, we've, we've reached a new high yeah. or low. I'm not sure which. All right. We are take, talking so, Texas. Tech and Baylor coming up next. Cody Stovall and I are going to duke it out over BYU and Oklahoma State. We'll get to that as we uh, close out this edition of Locked On Big 12 Squad momentarily. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Hims. Guys, sometimes those intimate moments happen spontaneously. That's where Hims steps in. They can help you guys be ready to get that boost of confidence so you know whenever the mood strikes, you are ready to rock and roll. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with the access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Provide you access to a range of doctor-trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis, and their generics are up to 95% cheaper. Think about that. Saving a bunch of money out there. The best part is the process is 100% online, so there's need to throw those uncomfortable doctor's visits to get the help you guys need. No insurance is needed. And then one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care. Just take a couple of uh, minutes to answer a series of questions on their site. And a medical provider will uh, obviously evaluate your needs and find the right treatment option for you guys. If prescribed, your medication ships directly to you in discreet packaging, packaging for free with hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers hymns can help you find the ed option that works for you start your free online uh, visit today but hymns.com slash locked on that's h-i-m-s.com slash locked on for your personalized ed treatment options hymns.com slash locked on the products mentioned are chewable compounded products which are not approved or verified for safety or effectiveness by the fda prescribed prescriptions excuse me require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required and price varies based on product and subscription plan. Welcome back to the Locked On Big 12 squad here. Jay Catch, Chris Level, Cody Stovall, JT Wister, so Richie Bradshaw, Mountaineer Paul out there in Morgantown and Park Rains. Worth hanging out with y'all. All right, uh, Cody, give me your best smack talk from the Oklahoma State side of things when it comes to facing off against the BYU Cougars. Ready? Go. Well, it doesn't look great, but here's what I will say. We get to bring in a new quarterback. We do have some help defensively now that should be able to show out on the field. So just like I always tell everybody on here, I like big butts and I like big dubs. So we're about to be soaking on the W's in Provo, Utah, baby. <laughs> soaking jokes. I was waiting for something to come out of that. Soaking jokes. I like it. Soaking in the dubs, baby. Well, how's, how's Jameis Winston do it? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> well, I can tell you this much. BYU fans will say thank you, sir. May I have another, and they will be bringing you that ice cream. But you know when you show up, so make sure you check out check out the Cougar Tales while you're here as well. All right. Do you guys have like chocolate milk and stuff like that on tap in oh, your yeah. stadium? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's awesome. Good. Strawberry milk and <laughs> the whole thing, guys. Trust me, it's the it's, oh, has milk and honey. The, the, the dirty, the dirty soda litmus test. People, that, what's a dirty soda? JT yeah. and Jake can't answer. Okay, Chris, you know what a dirty soda is? That's this is a great question for our hosts. 
I saw y'all talking about this on the on the on the text. <laughs> um, I. Uh, <laughs> I I mean I honestly have no no concept of what it okay. you know. Cody Stovall, you know what it is. It sounds like something they should serve in Manhattan with uh, St. Bill Snyder, but uh, probably not. All right. <laughs> fill, fill me in. What 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 is in it? We'll get to it in a moment. Richie Bradshaw, I know you're down in the Valley of the Sun. They have them down there. Do you know what a dirty soda is? I was going to say, I might just need to sneak over to Mill Avenue and have some 19-year-old kid with a fake ID fill me in on what it is. Or, or just sneak over to Mesa. I can tell you Mesa will have it. <laughs> I, I value my life. I'm not going to Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert is somewhere around there, that whole Mormon corridor. You know what I'm talking about. Love Gilbert. Yep. All right. Gilbert's all good. All right. Mountaineer Paul, do you know what a dirty soda is? Uh, it's, it is. <laughs> <laughs> he brought out the phone. I love it. It says it's a, uh, or do we have to get to Parker still? Okay. Are you Parker. asking him too? Parker's got in-laws live out here in Utah. I've grubbed with Parker out here in Salt Lake City. Right. So, oh, okay. So well it says away. it's a uh, drink consisting of soda spiked with cream and a flavor with syrups and juices. Bingo. Right? Yep. Yep. And That's it, how it, they it, spike it, things in Salt Lake City. They use cream. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Sounds dangerous. So it's like a Starbucks sugary f- foo-foo drink or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Might be yeah. up all night after taking one of those. Stay yeah. up past your 10 o'clock yeah. bedtime. Let's just put it this way. We don't chase, like, liver disease. We chase the diabetes out here in Utah. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> you have to to stay way. warm, dude. Diabetes. diabetes. <laughs> time. I'm not going to lie. I might. I got to tell you, when water. y'all ask me what a dirty soda is, boy, I, my mind is all over the dang place. I did not ways. think it would be – Cream and, and sugar or something in uh, soda water. That was not. <laughs> what urban thing. dictionary, Chris? Oh, hey, Chris, Chris, the best part is go get it. And here's the thing: the, the nectar of the gods out this way is Diet Coke, and they they will they will mix with everything. It feels DC. like. Under- Okay. All right. Yes, so I don't know what a dirty girl is. on the wild is. side. I do. I do know what a dirty girl is. Um, <laughs> well, Cody, who approves the show? <laughs> It would. They kept it on another week. That's their fault. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt about that. All right. Uh, Chris, we have not had a chance to ask you about your matchup this weekend. Uh, what is the expectation as Baylor makes the cross state trek uh, to Lubbock this weekend? I mean, is is this a is this an opposing coach coming into Lubbock that's that's coaching for his job? I, I think Drake I, Toll's the new head coach. Well, that's I the mean, thing. We think <laughs> Drake's and like parts unknown. He Sitting might be in an interviews. Job. Who knows? The the crazy thing about Baylor is uh, okay. So they played Utah close. They played BYU really close. Um, First half was bad. They played Iowa State very close, really into the mid third quarter, and then it kind of got away from them. I mean, they Texas Tech has won a bunch of close games. Baylor has lost a bunch of close games. So I think this could be a, actually a really sneaky, tough game. I don't know if Baylor can put it all together. Their starting quarterback is actually from Lubbock, uh, Texas, uh, Sawyer Robertson. So I don't know if he plays better, he plays worse. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what to think there, but uh, this would be a, a sneaky, tough game for the Red Raiders, I think. And that's obviously where Joey McGuire came from uh, was uh, was Baylor. And you have a, a guy that will be rushing the passer for Baylor uh, and then Steve Linton that played at Texas Tech last year. So there's a lot of connections here, so it will be fascinating. And it should be Tech's a fun about one. a six-and-a-half-point favorite there. Yep, that's yeah. right. Yeah, now, that's what I saw uh, earlier. I'll just say this, Cody, when Oklahoma State comes into town, I'm fully expecting BYU to be 7-0 and after this one, but enjoy that ice cream all the same, okay? Well, I will say this. I, I said a, a while back, you know, a couple episodes ago, that this conference is more bipolar than my XL lady, and that has been proven right every well, single week. So if there's going to be a week that – we can, you know, magically pop up like a, a mushroom out of a, a my gun to cow patty. It's got to be this one. This is the time, oh, right? When everybody thinks that we're about to get dominated, this is the game. All right. All right. Well, hey, Cody Stovall's had too many dirty sodas. We got to cut them off. If, if, preseason, <laughs> if preseason number sixteen, Arizona State can run the doors off of uh, number one Utah, anything can happen. I knew. I knew Locked On BYU was getting a shot, and I knew I wasn't going the whole episode without Locked On BYU hosting a show just to torture me even more. This is oh, you got me, Jake. They, they called in the grown-ups to host the show with Drake interviewing for that Baylor job. Let's just put it that way. I think you were supposed to inverse the ratings. I think that's what happened. ASU was supposed to finish first, Utah. There we go. Okay. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, like we all predicted. 
Okay, well, Kevin Borba decided not to show up, and obviously there was that, you know, there was a certain bet about a tattoo on a rear end for uh, somebody on the line with St. Bill Snyder. Well, Borba decided, you know what, even though he couldn't be here with us, you know, physically, in the physical sense, he decided to record his take on all things uh, Colorado in their matchup this weekend. Here's Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, great take, right take. great take. I mean, wow, he yeah, yeah, really, really nailed that one. one. Absolutely yeah. riveting, riveting. Stuff. Hey. riveting stuff by Borba. Borba needs to show up next time. Let's just put it that way. Like, no more of this recording. Uh, Powered, yes. Like Drake's, Drake, like you said, no parts unknown. He could have recorded his take. He didn't even decide to even do that. So, no. All right, I want to be on Drake's parts unknown. <laughs> well, that is going to do it for this edition of Locked On Big 12 Squad. Everybody, follow and subscribe to your favorite uh, Locked On Big 12 show. We got Chris Level with Locked On Texas Tech, Cody Stovall, Locked On Oklahoma State, JT Wistersill with some show, some show called Locked On Utes, even though, you know, two Utes, what, what, what's the story there? But nonetheless, Richie Bradshaw, Locked On Sun Devils, Mountaineer Paul, Locked On West Virginia Mountaineers. Enjoy that good weather out there on the East Coast, boys. And then, of course, Parker Ainsworth, where he's still waiting for basketball season with Locked On Cougs. But that, 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 AP pulls out. We're good. This is it. Yeah. We're doing it. All right. What are we doing? Uh, <laughs> go forks up or go shockers? What well, are we here, doing? Yeah. There, there, there we go. That's the there's the why for the coog. So there we go. <laughs> Great show, guys. We'll see you next week. The keep, camera, going, keep hope alive, everybody. Follow the show. Also check out Locked yeah. On Big Twelve wherever you get your shows every single day. Right here on the Locked On Big Twelve podcast and Locked On uh, Network. Of course, it is your team every day.